Some, like Gypsy, explain the condition as being related to the level of adrenaline in the bloodstream. According to this theory, werewolves react strangely to surges of adrenaline, almost as if they have an allergy, swelling up and undergoing a physical change. But few first-hand descriptions of the actual transformation have been documented, until now. Uh, from personal experience, what happens to me is that uh, I start feeling a swelling or a tightening of the muscles. Usually around the chest area is where it starts. People notice a physical change in the color of my eyes. My eyes, which are normally hazel green, will go to a goldish or a yellow when this reaction happens. My feet and hands actually form rough pads, much like an animal. Um, my muscles swell. I also have heard from uh, family individuals who the person suffers from lycanthropy, uh, but the family does lock them in a room for the four or so many days of the full moon, and then they release them at that time. The after effects of the transformation are not pleasant. The next day, everything goes back to normal. Now you've got these muscles that have been stretched beyond capacity. Just like working out with weights or anything else and performing muscle strain, very hard to move, you're tired, and afterward you feel like, you feel like you've been run over by a dump truck. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's not something I want to go on the six o'clock news and, 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 and morph out and then do this in you know, three shows a day uh, for Vegas or something, just, just as a novelty. Because it is physically demanding, it, is, it, it, it hurts. And I like myself a lot, I don't like to hurt me. As a leader of the Lycan community, Gypsy serves as a role model and resource for others. There are people out there that have, that have a nature they don't understand. They run for it because of society. I'll be more than happy to tell them, look, you can cope with this nature. But they're afraid of what they're becoming. They're afraid of what they'll do. But this Lycan underworld remains secretive. For there are those who would destroy any werewolves they could find. Vampires carrying out the age-old vendettas and other hunters who use both traditional weapons and modern technology in an attempt to eliminate the undead. I'll have to run a few tests. It's definitely an irradiated fluid of some sort. Ultraviolet ammunition. Daylight harnessed as a weapon. It was the same with a werewolf. You would stake, but you would then cut off the head and burn the body. We now return to Fang versus Fiction. As long as there have been werewolves and vampires, there have been those who have hunted them. There's a, there's a long tradition of vampire hunters. The early church, the medieval church had, employed full-time werewolf hunters, witch hunters, vampire hunters, full-time torturers, and full-time woodcutters for the stakes. In European tradition, locals would often hire a dampier the offspring of a vampire and a human, to track down and destroy a vampire. Here, uh, dampiers were very real. They had special powers as hunters. Dampiers have disappeared in the mists of time. But many of the techniques and weapons they used to ward off and kill vampires have been passed down through history. European thinking associated vampires with Satan so a religious symbol like the crucifix, with its heavenly power, was thought to repel the beast. But modern-day werewolves or vampires have little fear of these icons. And with that power, you will be destroyed. The vampires are far bigger than Christian mythology. And so you have modern vampires who um, don't have any problem with the cross, who are um, not particularly affected by uh, Christian symbols, uh, uh, drink holy water. And today, few would imagine that garlic would work against the powers of the undead. The garlic that the vampire hunters used around their neck was not to repel the vampire, but to repel the smell of death as they were opening up these caskets. To actually kill a vampire, you must track it down and destroy it in person. Traditionally, vampire hunters seek out their prey as it lies dormant in its tomb. You're not trying to find a living person. You're, you, you, you're, you're going to the graveyard, and what you're looking for there 
is dead. You're looking for a disturbed grave. You're looking for a corpse that has not decayed properly or has not decayed at all, or that looks swollen and seems to have blood still within it. Uh, you're looking for a corpse that seems to have, have moved in the, in the coffin. Those are the signs you're looking for. Driving a stake through the heart has been one of the major methods of killing vampires for hundreds of years. The notion being that if you destroy the heart, that's the thing that actually pumps the blood, you destroy the, you destroy the vampire. After being staked, a corpse is often decapitated and the dismembered body incinerated to ensure there is no physical form that can heal itself and return from the dead. According to tradition, vampires can also be destroyed by the sun. Throughout history, hunters have found ways to harness light as a weapon against the undead. Vampires are vulnerable as they habitually retreat to their daytime resting place. But a werewolf is never dormant, and there is rarely a time you can catch them completely off guard. Due to their ability to regenerate physical tissue, lichens are mostly immune from injury and physical disease. However, they can be killed by any wound that damages the heart or the brain beyond repair. It was the same with the werewolf. You would stake, but you would then cut off the head and burn the body. Tradition holds that shooting a werewolf with a silver bullet is the only infallible method of killing it. The full moon is the time, the time of the werewolf. Um, the silver bullet, silver is the moon metal. It has a relationship with the light of the moon, the silver light of the moon. So therefore, you, you take these two things together and you use the magical connection to forge a weapon that can kill this creature which operates only at the time of the full moon. We can only imagine, however, that vampires and werewolves have utilized cutting-edge technology to improve these age-old tools, creating sophisticated weapons that use silver and light. Silver nitrate. Lethal dose. They won't be able to dig these out like they do with their usual mouths. Straight into the bloodstream. Ain't nothing to dig out. Ultimately, the best hunters of the undead are the undead themselves. In their age-old battle for dominance of the underworld, they have surely become well-practiced at seeking out and destroying each other. Look at the people around you. They may well be more than just ordinary mortals. But approach the undead with caution, for the hunter often becomes the hunted. Enter the underworld at your own risk. And when the battle begins, which side will you choose? Whoa!